Hello everyone, today we're going to be adding Discord integration into a Ruby on Rails app. So what's this going to look like? Well, basically you come in here, you create a new post in this example. We create it with some words in stuff. And then when we click create post, you'll see the post gets created. And over here you can see that RB demo, the bot has posted to this channel. We can also message RB demo if we'd like with like the ping exclamation mark command and you'll see it responds with Pong. Uh, and here you can see that I've been testing this extensively and uh, sometimes having bugs. But this one seems to have worked, so that's pretty cool. It's working in the video, uh, it's always exciting. Let's go ahead and let's try to implement this. We're gonna be doing this using the Discord RB gem, which you can find on the shardlab slash discord.rb GitHub page. Uh, but to do that, we actually have to come out of here and let me make sure there's nothing in here. There is, let me do a rm-rf for the video project and a Rails new for another video project because we don't need that other one. So basically in here, all we really have to do is add in the gem for Discord RB. We'll do a bundle add. This is a Ruby gem, not a Rails specific gem. So this is gonna work in a basic Ruby file and the directions are gonna be sort of centered around that. In my case, I don't want that. I want it to be a Rails type of thing. So we're gonna CD into our video, do a bundle add for Discord RB, and then we're gonna have to find a place to actually initialize this. After we initialize it, we have to come over to the Discord app portal to create an app, and then we're good to go. Uh, so let's go ahead and do this. Let's do a code dot to open this up in VS Code like we always do. After we have the VS Code open, I can close all of these spoilers here. Uh, we can then come over to, I guess, the config file and the routes.rb. Let's generate a scaffold. We'll say Rails G scaffold. Let me increase the font size a bit. Rails G scaffold, we'll call them post, give each post a title and a body of type text, just like that. Do a Rails DB colon migrate command to migrate our database. After that's done, we can then go ahead and do a Rails S to start our server. We can then come into our routes, set the root to be the uh, post controller index action. Then in our initializers, we can right click and create a new bot.rb file. It doesn't have to be called bot.rb, you can call it whatever you'd like to. I just like calling mine bot.rb. Inside of here, we need to require the discord rb file. We can then do something like a channel ID is equal to and then we'll add in the channel ID where we want to post our stuff. In this case, I'll just grab this one right here, the test, I right click, I come down to copy ID. If you want more than one ID, you're more than willing to do so, uh, or more than able to. In my case, I'm only using one channel, uh, but this allows me to post to that channel. So I can even change this from like channel ID to the testing channel. Now I do need to put a comment here that tells RuboCop uh, uh, disable all on this one um or rubocop ignore this line and then we have to hopefully get the comment here i don't know why it's so uh so so stubborn about this but it keeps trying to reformat this there we go we now have the channel id let's do a bot equals discord rb commands command bot dot new we then come down here we pass in a token which will be coming from our rails.application.credentials.dig and we grab the discord token we then grab a client id with a similar approach except we put this one under client id and then we have a prefix which will just be the forward slash we can then go ahead and close this we do need to stop the server now hit f11 and we want to do a editor equals and then inside of quotes, code space dot space dash dash wait. And then we wanna do a rails space credentials colon edit. So open this up inside of VS code over here. And then once we close the VS code window, it'll save what's in here. We'll do a discord block. It doesn't need to be giving me a, a secret key. That's kind of weird that it has one. Uh, we then want a token block and a client ID block. Now to get these, we have to come over to uh, discord.com slash developers slash applications. I'll have a link to this in the video description, assuming I remember to do it. If I don't, just yell at me in the comments and I'll add it. Uh, we then want to create a new application. We will call this uh, the uh, rails underscore discord, I guess. We'll click the checkbox, we'll hit create. This will generate our application for us. We now have a application ID right here. That is our client ID. 
We can then come down to, I think the bot. We wanna click add a bot, yes do it. We have to reset the token because we don't have one. I'm gonna paste this in to the token section right here, make sure I put a space. And now I have my uh, secret token right there. Now, the last thing to do here is to just name this. We're gonna call this the rails underscore uh, uh, discord underscore, oh, I guess we'll just leave it as the rails discord bot. Hopefully it's okay with me doing that. Looks like it is. Uh, and now we should be good to go. We do need to give this bot some permissions, I think. Uh, which means actually, yeah, we need to give it the send messages and the read message history permissions. But we also have to come over to the OAuth and the URL generator. So maybe we just do it in here. We want to give this the ability to, uh, what is it? We want to make it a bot. We want to give it the ability to send messages and read the message history. This will give us a link. We can copy that link. We can come over here. We can paste the link into a new URL. We can then check what this wants. It wants the ability to create commands in a server. We can then come down here and add it to decider testing, which is my, my server. You can add it to whichever server you'd like. Alternatively, we can also have the bot print out a uh, connection URL. I'll show you how to do that as well. In this case, I'm just gonna add it to the server. Click continue. It asks for those specific permissions. We click authorize. It tells me to check if I'm human. I click yes. And now hopefully uh, we should have a rails underscore if a rails underscore bot in our server fantastic i guess it doesn't like the word discord in uh in the name okay whatever let's go ahead and let's close these credentials that will then say file encrypted and saved we're good there we can go ahead and continue over here the next thing we want to do is going to be a little bit of ruby magic we want to grab the directory in here inside of these square brackets we want to do a rails.root slash app slash command slash asterisk.rb and then for each of those files, we want to uh, require them. What does that mean? Well, if we come over here to our Explorer inside of our app, we need to create a commands folder. We'll right click new folder, call it commands, hit enter. In here, we can put all of our Discord commands. In this case, I'm gonna create a ping.rb command file. This will be uh, for the random ping messages that I was spamming myself with. To do this, we can create a module. We then want to uh, extend the command command container, I guess you can do that. Uh, and then what we wanna do is have something where we do, I don't know, maybe like a bot.message or we could do a bot.command do event. And then for both of these, we can do something different. Now these are gonna be for direct messages, not messages to a specific channel, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna check if a user DMs us with a ping or with a regular, or ping with an exclamation mark or just a regular ping. And then if they do, we respond with something. So here I'll respond with message. And with this one, I'll respond with command. Maybe we'll just leave the word pong in just because it's fun. Uh, it is like six in the morning. I might as well have a little bit of fun. Okay, so we'll, we'll do that. We can then come back over to our bot.rb. After we do that, this will load all of those command files, including the ping. You can then do a bot.run and pass in the true. And then optionally, if you wanna have your invite URL printed when you start your app, you can paste in a puts invite URL and uh, inside of some rubies, uh, rubies uh, template string, you can pass in the bot.invite URL, save that, come over here and run a Rails S. If we start this, we should hopefully see the invite URL right here. I'm gonna go ahead and close this. If we control click on this, this will take us to another invite page, which will work just fine, hopefully. Okay, so we can go ahead and close that because we already added it. The next thing we can do is we can give this a shot. So we have the ping command set up. We don't have the ability to uh, do the post yet. I can also see here that our channel ID is not gonna work because RuboCop has decided to uh, completely wage war on us. Okay, after some Googling, we managed to get RuboCop to work a little bit. Why this is a tool we choose to subject ourselves to is beyond me, but now we have the channel ID formatting properly. That was just unnecessary. Okay, so now if we come over to our Discord, hopefully what we can try and do is test out these ping commands. Let's come over to the Rails underscore bot, say hello, just to move the chat over here. And then in here, what we'll do is we'll try a ping exclamation mark. And here we can see it responded with a message pong. We can also try this ping, which is just gonna be a lowercase. That's not gonna get a reply, but what else we can try is a slash ping. 
Now see here you can see that's the command ping because our command prefix is the slash. We could change this to like an exclamation mark, stop the server. We could then start the server again because this is inside of an initializer. We could then try something like a ping with a exclamation mark, get the message pong. We could then try a exclamation mark ping and get the command pong because now that's our prefix. Hopefully that makes sense. Next step, we're gonna do the post stuff. For the post stuff, we have to come into our controllers and our post controller and come down to the create action. Inside of the create action, under this at post.save, I'm gonna do a post service dot new, pass in a at post and pass in a URL for the at post. And then I want to do a dot call. Now this post service we have to create, so let's go do that. That's right, we're playing with service objects again. We'll right click new folder, call this services, and then we'll right click new file, call this the uh, post underscore service, I guess, dot RB. Kind of making this up as I go along. Uh, we then want to do uh, maybe a, uh, let's just do a class for the post service. You probably want to namespace this to like the Discord post service or something. But in this case, I'm just going to do it like this. We're going to pass in the post and the URL. We're then going to set a at post equals post and a at URL equals URL. We'll then come down here and do our call. And inside of our call method, what we want to do, not necessarily like this, I guess, uh, but we, we we could, um, but I think a better way of doing this would be something like creating a message again, where we have a, uh, a new post has been created. We can then do a slash N for a line break, and then we can do something like, I'm just gonna copy this entire line so I don't have to sit here and type it all out. Uh, let me do another end. Uh, what we can do is we can say a new post has been created with a slash N the title is the at post title inside of a, a template. Then we have a uh, you can view the you can view it here with another URL right here. So we just have a line break at each line. We have a total of two line breaks for three total lines. So now if we try to do a bot dot and the command is send underscore message, we can pass in that channel ID constant we made and we can pass in this message that we just constructed for ourselves. We can then, uh, let's move this down here, I guess. And then we can come down to this decider testing chat again. And hopefully we'll see the rails underscore account post something when we do a new uh, thing. However, because we created this service folder, I do want to stop the server and start it again, just to make sure it's loading in that services folder. Uh, because I make that mistake a lot. Let's come in here and do a final test with cool features working, hopefully. We'll hit create post. You can see there is a bit of a delay, so you might wanna move this to a background job, but here you can see that the RailsBot post, uh, uh, that a new post has been created with the title of a final test and that you can view it here. And that is your Discord bot integration. Of course, you could host your server, add this bot to your server wherever you host it, and you would have all of your Rails stuff communicating with Discord. This also works nicely with something like the Notice Gem, uh, which already has the Discord functionality sort of baked into it. Uh, so that's also something worth taking a look at. Hopefully this was interesting. Uh, hopefully it was helpful. And if you'd like to see more about Discord integration, feel free to leave suggestions down below. Uh, but I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.